Hello, my name is Dian Sui Nai, and you're listening to the MBS Show. Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number one three five. I am your host Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Rom. Hello, all you happy people. Hey, Rom, how are you doing, man? Slowly but surely.、Mm. Anything interesting happened today?、Uh, my parents came over. <laughs> oh God! So、uh, that was kind of awkward. <laughs> Did they complain about the mess? Yes, they did.、Oh, well, I was working all week, man. I couldn't clean the apartment if I wanted to. Well, you have been partying really hard. I wasn't partying. I was working. What's a party? A party is when I'm in the club. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. No problem then. No problem then. And our guest for this week is Julian Yeo, or also known as the M29. Hey. How are you doing, man? Okay, guys. So, how has your day been? Uh, well, slow. <laughs> so it、yeah. seems to be that way for everyone, I guess. Yeah, it's that time of the year. It's October. Yeah, exactly. I, mean, I just, it's, it's I just released a few, just released a few art pieces over the, you know, because、uh, yesterday was October ten. Hmm.、Mm, yes, yes, yes. This very special date. So. Anyway, Julian, before we move on, I need to ask you the four important questions.、Um, question number one is, who's your favorite character? Twilight. <laughs> wow! If I haven't seen your blog, that wouldn't be so obvious. So why Twilight? Why Twilight? She is the character that got me into the show, basically because she is voiced by Tara Strong,、mm-hmm. and、uh, well, that was about it. I didn't really care much for the show until. I got deeper into it, but what caught me onto the show is because of Tara Strong voicing Twilight Sparkle. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. So, favorite pony is Twilight. All right. So, what's your favorite episode? Oh dear. Ah,、uh, favorite episode. I guess it will be the Cantalot wedding episodes. That is a good one. That is a good one. So before、yes. before we move on, I need to ask you this: What do you Think of Twilight Time. Twilight Time. Twilight Time is the one where all the little ponies come and invade. Yeah, <laughs> in, invade Twilight's. Yeah, yeah. The one where she messes herself on burgers. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah,、uh, that was okay. I guess it was more of a CMC episode. I'm、yeah. okay with CMC episodes, but it gets a bit. Repetitive at times. Okay, yeah, I mean because the title of the show is saying Twilight Time, and they're like, ah,、oh, Twilight Time. Where's Twilight? <laughs> yeah, but, but still, it's a good episode. But we have plenty of episodes where he Twilight appears out of nowhere, and、oh, she's, mm-hmm. she's just there for no for no good reason. Yep, starting from season two. <laughs> so, how did you become a fan of the show? From what you said earlier, it was because of Tara Strong, right? Yeah, but actually, I have very have absolutely no idea how I actually found the how found the show. I just came across it by accident. I I I, I didn't like you know because most fans would have gone through、uh, internet、uh, internet discussion boards and stuff. But I just sort of picked it up. I saw I saw it on YouTube. That was、mm. the start. Of it. All right. And then eventually, I said I didn't know there was a new My Little Pony. The the first thing that caught my eye was because of the character design. It wasn't the, it wasn't the familiar feminine, ish girly girly pony things we've seen in the previous generations. This was different, and then I realized that、uh, Lauren Fowles was involved.、Mm. And the reason why the art style caught my eye is because I knew it was flash animation. I had a previous love for Flash animation with、uh, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. Oh, that was Flash, really? Yeah, that one was Flash. That was、uh, that was first. That was the that was Craig McCracken's first、uh, Flash、um, animated、uh, series. Hmm. Okay. And、uh, of course, Lauren Fowles was involved as well. The the two of them, as you, as you guys might know, I mean, they, the two of them have been working on Powerpuff Girls,、mm-hmm. which yep, was they did fan of as well. Hmm. Yeah.、Right. So eventually that caught on, and then you know, knowing, knowing、uh, what Lauren Fowles is capable of, that、uh, that's the second that's the second reason why I, I actually、uh, found the show to be intriguing. Ah, so your 
a Lauren Faust fan then? So you like everything that she I worked like, on? I like the things she does, but there's a lot of miscon- mis... Um, I'm not sure if that's the right word. Misconceptions that the, the stuff that Lauren Faust does is actually done by her, but in, <sighs> in actuality, it's actually Craig McCracken's work. Mm. So sometimes uh, Lauren Faust gets miscredited for the pop-up goals when uh, Craig McCracken was behind it. Not to say that she's incapable of... Uh, creating such a show she did do FIM after all but, mm, true yeah. true true yeah, it's just synonymous when you think about um, Lauren Faust you automatically click to Powerpuff Girls you automatically click to Fosters even though that's not what she did yeah. she only helped but yeah, still she helped <laughs> no I mean she probably got the experience from working with uh, him uh, working with Craig McCracken and the rest of the team of Cartoon Network mm, true true so, uh, the final question is, what do your family and friends think about your love for the show? I think they're, they're more or less okay with it. Uh, I mean, I haven't quite built like an overboard obs- obsession of it. But, uh, I, I mean, I do do fan art and stuff, but it's only when uh, I have... It's, it's just a hobby. So, I don't actually uh, go deep into it. Like, usually I, I do spend nights... Uh, 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 doing fan art but yeah so mm. as as I don't make it a crazy crazy habit alright so yeah. basically don't be don't be like me then <laughs> I mean I mean I mean my family knows my history with being a fan of a previous girly what it was perceived as a girly girly show with Powerpuff mm. Girls oh yeah Powerpuff uh, Girls was not girly if you really think about it like you, yeah. you can't really say that the Power of Girls was a girly show because Craig McCracken developed it. Yeah, I mean, like, if you really look at it, they beat up a monkey every week and his brain shows, like, you. That was definitely the start of... Uh, Humor? Strong strong hmm. women in animation, more or less. I mean, that's, that's how I feel. Mm, true. Yeah, it's not bad. I mean, um, most of Craig's work was pretty awesome. And to say... Hope of Girl was a girly show. It's a misconception, really. That's, you know, freaking stereotypical, man. Mm, true, Just because true. you see girls doesn't mean it's for girlies. I mean, have you seen the amounts of butts kicked in that show? Yeah. True. true that. I, I think it's... Uh, every episode, there's a butt kicking scene, if I'm doing... If I remember yes, right. it's all about butt kicking. <laughs> you didn't remember oh, the original... Butts. That's like for both guys and gals. It's like a combo. It's unisex, if you will. Mm-hmm. You didn't remember the Every- original title for the Pop of Girls, right? You know, I'm not. I'm not going to touch that one. If you want to know, go look it up on the interwebs. There's wiki for a reason. The I, 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 I can't say it, can I? Yeah, let's <laughs> not. Let's not. not <laughs> now, uh, if you're interested in the original name for Pop of Girls, uh, go. Wikipedia it because it's really funny. If you original think about it. What? Yeah, 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 yeah. But anywho, um. Thank you, Julian, for answering the four important questions. And you know what? Let's go into the next topic, which is guest time. And Julian, for people who don't know who you are and what you do, mind introducing yourself to them? Sure. Uh, well, I mean, you guys know my real name now. is hardly a secret. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm DM29 on uh, Divinart. I've been DM29 on Divinart for... Uh, seven seven past years, way before I've had the account way before uh, I did uh, My Little Pony uh, fan art, and uh, I actually never intended on starting <laughs> because uh, while I discovered the show on May twenty eleventh, I only started uh, vector art for because vector art was still new to me. Uh, I just had recently uh, graduated from uh, design school, oh. so I had a. Uh, I had picked up the skill in Adobe Illustrator, which is a vector vector program. So, mm-hmm. uh, having having a love for uh, Flash Animation, which is also another vector program, uh, producing the sharp sharp lines that you see on uh, such animation, it didn't actually kick off until much later, when I only started in November or December. 2011. I think it's 2011. Because the, the first season had just ended, yeah. Mm. So, I mean, um, I was... I would, say, I would say folks know me because of my art style, which is... I mean, this is based on information I've gathered. Alright. 
my art style which is uh, show accurate but not quite show accurate at the same time yeah and also the the things I do with Twilight <laughs> yes, yes. things I do with uh, Shining Armor Princess Cadence and Flash Entry mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah that, I, I'm looking at it right now and basically how do I put this what you mentioned before like the show being show accurate but not really show accurate I can see it like huh, it's almost show accurate but not really there's something off about it like whenever anybody sees it you can tell that hey this is your work like this is what yeah. you do and it has its style it's hard to explain because I, I, I got a lot of comments like mm-hmm. I got a lot of similar comments when I first started <clears throat> when in actuality I did actually reference from the show well mm-hmm tried to do it line for line but it eventually evolved into something different which is the end product that you see here so it wasn't show accurate but it looked show accurate Mm, yeah I I think that what counts because uh, having your own style is important too yeah so you mentioned you use uh, Illustrator as your tool of the trade so do you use tablet with this um, no, because my hands are too jittery to actually draw. So, um, I mean, the only perk about vector-based graphics and why I like it so much is that I don't have to use my jittery hands. It's entirely mouse-based. Mm, all right, yeah. because, well, I too am a illustrator artist by my trade before, back then, and I had this problem where using the mouse kind of hurts my hand if I do it for yeah. a long time. So yeah. that's me. That's why I opted out to use a uh, tablet, which is... I mean, hand-drawn artwork is definitely for tablets. Mm, true that, true that. I, I, I have a tablet on my own, but I mean, I don't use it as often anymore. Mm-hmm. But uh, if you if if you flip through the early days of my uh, Divinart account, you can see all my work on tablet, which is horrendous little scribbles. Like um, your early work folder there? Very, very early work, yes. But still, um, that's very early and you improve a lot. Yeah, because uh, I no longer worked on raster graphics. <laughs> because uh, most, of, most, of this, most of this early work was uh, Photoshop. Ah. Yeah. So, so didn't actually uh, do any hand-drawn stuff on uh, Illustrator. Quite rare because one, it's not quite my thing and two... Uh, I mean, doing vector graphics by mouse is much more simpler. Easy on the hands for mm. me. I guess. All right. I I guess uh, different artists have different ways because well, like I said, I use the tablet to um, do vectors. Yeah? Okay. So I'm looking through your page and whatnot, and I tend to see a lot of armor, cadence, and twilight and flash. So why those characters? Well, Twilight because you know favorite character. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, Cadence, uh, Cadence, and Shining Armor is related to why that those are my favorite episodes. Mm. Because uh, I I do like the back I do like the lack of a backstory for Shining Armor. <laughs> I actually recently explained on um, on my Divinot that because the show just had Shining Armor suddenly appear out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. It gives the it gives the audience an impression that we don't we know we only know as much as uh, Twilight would know of a brother, because the two of them has gone has gone so distant that they are far apart and they don't really know each other anymore. Mm-hmm. So having that clean slate actually allows uh, a fresh start for artists and whatnot. Fresh start for and it's for character interpretation mm-hmm. because. Well, Shining Armor and Princess Cadence don't really get a lot of airtime as the rest of the characters. Mm, true, or a lot and, of love. Uh, Shining Armor has less cap, has less airtime than uh, Cadence. <laughs> true, true, true. Poor him. Not saying that he's bad, but he, he could use some more love. Yeah, which is which I feel is the job of the fan base, the the, the fan art department. <laughs> true, true. Yep. As far a... as I know, a lot of people got their heads cannon screwed. Oh, mm. because of shiny. Uh, sorry, Sentry. Sentry. <laughs> a lot of them never oh. made any more sense because then this guy here, Sentry. Why do I keep confusing the two? 
Last Century came into Twilight's life, and everyone p- was portrayed as a love interest. Well, at least a hint to it. Mm. And a lot of people, a lot of people write fan fiction stuff. Already have made, you know, shipping and stuff. And when Century came into the scene, it all gone to nowhere. Mm. Yeah. It was rendered useless. As far, well, that's as far as I know. I mean, it could have been another reason for that. I, I think Personally, I kind of like Century. Mm. Century's not bad, but no. Um... I mean, I don't have any reason to hate him. <laughs> True, your 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 OC's not shit with him, so yay. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> no, but um, as we talk about this, I mean, uh, using Flash, using Cadence and Shining Armor, uh, they're not the most characters that people would say, "Hey, I want to do this more. I want to draw more of this because, well, I like drawing them." Because if you have a graph, or at least on Derpy Baru, you can tell that, oh, okay, people who draw Flash Sentry, not a lot. People who draw Cadence, okay, because she's a girl. And people who draw Shining Armor, yeah, there's some of them out there, yeah, probably, yeah, just a few. People who draw Twilight, woo, there's a lot. I think the more prominent thing uh, as to why I, you see a lot of Cadence is because you see a lot of Shining Armor. Mm-hmm. Because I do ex- same same with Flash Century. I because it is not explicitly expressed in the show. Ex- well, the comics did depict the comics did depict the uh, relationship between Shining Armor and Cadence. But uh, to me, it, to me, it feels the gap is left to open interpretation. Mm-hmm. So how a Flash Century would be as you know uh, not a human as in his in his, in his pony form is you know. Flash Entry has only appeared in the movie in pony form and mm-hmm. in cameos. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. just one five second speech line in <laughs> yeah. the last episode that we had. Yeah, and already people are raging. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, to me, that allows me to expand, try to expand on their characters. You know, it's, 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 it's just it's something intriguing for me because everyone else has their characters established. Most mostly on the show. The main the main six don't need any establishment. Mm-hmm. Uh, most of the backstories for the you know for such characters have already been done on the show. Mm. So I do like your mindset with this really because I look at a lot of people and I talk to a lot of people and usually when they talk about Flash or when they talk about Shining or Cadence, usually it's going to be the word hate 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 kill 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 I don't like I don't like I don't like boo it's usually that but with your mindset it's something like they're clean slate let's try and build something with this I like this I didn't really bitch much about the flash entry because um, well I didn't see a point in it because I you know a, a lot of people were ranting about it and I mean inside inside I was slightly excited to see a Twilight develop a love interest but I didn't want a dumbed down tap water love interest, which, which, which is what we got in Equestria Girls. Mm. So, instead of whining about it, I actually started to develop the character a little mm. through art, right. which is what I've done for which is which is what I actually did for Shining Armor and Cadence. And that I do appreciate because, well, <laughs> it's, I, I do enjoy seeing certain aspects of your art when it comes to, let's say, Shining Armor and. Twilight, those two having fun as Phillies and Colts and whatever it is, they're just being there talking and whatnot, and also, well, just developing them in a hit canon way. The relationship between Twilight and Shining Armor is not really hit canon. It's not seen on the show, but it's kind of implied. So, the, I mean, relationship between Shining Armor and Cadence is canon, and the loving relationship between Shining Armor and Twilight is sort of canon just not express mm. we did get that song which I can no longer listen to <laughs> it makes me very sad uh, and every I time when I do watch that episode I skip ahead <laughs> oh, yeah. so wait that, 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 that means... one song just uh, tears me uh, just breaks me down so wait that means you need to listen to that song more than 100 times to at least get you not liking it anymore no, I no. The fact is, I don't. I don't like it. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, I, yeah, I don't like it. I don't hate it. But it's it's just very sad for me. Okay. Oh, it's, because yeah. of the last cadence. The last cadence. No, I do. I do not know what that means. Oh, I, I mean I, the I, change I, of tone in the song. No, no, no. I know there was an Easter egg in that uh, song, but 
I'm not too sure about it. Is is that the entire freaking? Is that entire uh, song itself? Mm, well, yeah. okay. I I do enjoy the song, but yeah, uh, let's move on. Let's move on. I, I don't make you um annoy, annoyed by the song, but yeah. So I'm looking through your page and whatnot, and I do see you have this sense of humor. Where example, smooching one o one. It's just basically the two of them, uh, shining and cadence kissing and Twilight saying you're doing it wrong and. That's funny, and I just yeah. keep going on and looking at certain things like um, Spike being annoyed by Twilight in celebrating International Literacy Day. So, I mean, uh, where do you come up with your humor? I don't know. It's more of a personal thing, I guess. Uh, like, okay. I mean, if if you if if you browse through my early stuff, I actually did. I actually had a web comic series, which is sort of in a very 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 long hiatus. I haven't picked up um, I haven't picked up my tablet to continue that series, but it's, it's, I had I had a webcomic series that ran for over a couple of hundred strips. Mm. And it's just an it was just an outlet for humor, but I I mean I'm just generally a um, humorous person. I'm not so much the class clown. Perhaps I was a class clown, but I mean I wasn't the first, I wasn't really the kind with good grades. I'm just, you know, sort of like Pinkie Pie. Mm. You know, I, I do, I do enjoy uh, making people happy. I do enjoy pe- making people smile. Yeah, and I suppose it's a sense of wit. Mm. Trying to, because it's it's, it's trying to figure out uh, how to make things funny. That intrigues me. So I try to make everything like you know. I mean, serious where serious is, but. When there's a time to uh, not to be so serious, there's always a time to make something humorous. Mm, all right, all right. Yeah, I do see that in some so, of... So well, stuff in my uh, MLP fan art is basically mm-hmm. stuff that you won't really see on the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's more of like... Uh, it's, 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 it's more of like interpretation of what the characters would be doing... Mm-hmm. In a situation that involves uh, such humor, <laughs> uh, I'm just looking at one now. It's the comic block uh, Royal Guard Independ- uh, Independence or Independence in pers- Oh God, I cannot say that word. Inception Day. Royal Guard Inspection. Oh, Inspection Day. Yes. Yeah, my my bad. Oh, I'm bad at reading. Yeah, I, I'm looking at this right now and. I've I've read this before and I just enjoy Twilight's um line. It's like insolence <laughs> at the top yeah. of a lung. That that is already funny to me there. That comic went through a bit of a revision. Actually uh, Twilight meant to shout. Uh, there there were two there were two instances where Twilight would shout but I found that repetitive so it was just that in- I kept the insolence. <laughs> she, was, she was also supposed to uh, shout, hold it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. On an, in an earlier panel, but I, I, I scratched that and just kept the insolence. Mm. Because, yeah. It, it's funny that, it's funnier that way. Yeah, funnier with one shout. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't need Shining Armor to be shocked twice. Yeah. <laughs> and, and just Cadence there saluting. Yeah, I mean, that's, that, that's what brings that, that's, that last three panels there. It, it sealed the deal. Yeah. So I mean, you you have the humor, you have the talent for it, and what's your plan with your comics and whatnot? Uh, do you have a arcing storyline, or is it just okay? This is going to be random comic of the day. No, it's completely random. I, um, I've had comics where, you know, where I've I've had instances where I would suddenly catch an episode, mm-hmm. and then at the end of it, oh. Here's an idea. Okay, I need to immediately get this into comic form, and I've actually, uh, I've actually rushed the comic out immediately. On, I can't remember if I've done that. It's either fan art or, or or a comic block. I've definitely did once or twice before where I rushed out and I rushed out a piece of fan art mm-hmm. immediately after the episode was done. Ah, okay. Yeah. To, to to get that humor in as fresh and as possible, but I mean it's it's a it's a spoiler there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not a lot of people want to see that, but those who have seen the episode will sort of appreciate the humor in the in my, in the expressions that I have. For example, the I think I did one comic block with uh, 
when uh, Rar- Rarity takes Manhattan, mm-hmm. Manhattan. Yeah, yeah. And and she 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 actually is playing with the two schools of thread that she has. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah. Where I can't remember what the episode's about. Oh yeah, no, the episode was where toilet, uh, Rarity's friends didn't actually help her out or something, or they eventually did, and you know, you know, Rarity start go, start started going to that whining whining mode in that. Why yeah. aren't you helping me and such? Yeah. So I, I sort of took that and, and blew that into an, a comic block form. Like nobody actually listens to me, and yeah. And then and then, and then Twilight comes in and Rarity is good. No, I'm not doing anything at all. <laughs> that, that, that that sort of thing. All right. Well, how was the response for that one? Can't remember. <laughs> I have to check it. Remember, most most of my comic blocks actually gets plenty of views. I don't quite know why that is, but. Generally, comic blogs get more attention than fan art themselves. Well, it could be because it's on e- um, EQD, probably. Who knows? <laughs> mm, EQD usually happens on the next day. Uh, I mean, uh, usually, usually how I've seen how I've seen my stuff gets uploaded on EQD. I don't know how it reaches there. How, I don't know how it actually gets onto EQD. But I mean, I mean, there was a time where I used to submit stuff to them, but. I mean, I must thank whoever is doing it behind the scenes, whether it's EQD themselves or a fan that uh, I, one of my one of my uh, fans or followers who actually does that for me. I, I mean, I, I really appreciate you guys doing that. Mm, yeah, I mean, it, it just gets the views out of nowhere, mm-hmm. but I think there is sort of a market or an audience for panel comics rather than just a one piece art thing. Mm, yeah. yeah. I think One Piece art is nice and awesome, but sometimes comics, that was we need. Like when we read comics, like I, I'm just like Royal Guard Inspection. That, that's my comic, man. <laughs> I, I just like that one. <laughs> oh, um, another way I like the girl, the girl support, uh, uh, the support a girl's need. Yeah, I like that one too. <laughs> oh, that one's a bit more. Which one? That's a bit more um, uh, touchy. Yeah, but I. I do enjoy that one. Like, yeah. I I like how you. It was a bit more. I mean, why I did that one was, I have an issue where if I feel that I don't do such, uh, an expression through art, I'll regret it. Oh, well, you yeah, know, I I, I do like um how you express it or use certain terms like they have no heart. Oh no! I mean, because. That that one definitely was uh, the in- original interpretation was simply because Rarity says that they have no hearts. Mm-hmm. There's definitely not a reference to that they don't have a proper the uh, assets. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, it's, it's just it, it's definitely that they have no hearts to to sort of just a twilight, a, a tell Twilight because it's it's not just a rainbow dash reference in a reference in twilight's question in that comic mm-hmm. it's also sunset <laughs> sunset shimmer yeah. because in the previous uh, equestria goes you know she was evil and all mm. that so <laughs> i thought that line they had no hearts made made more sense but i mean i i i, I do actually test uh, my comics sometimes uh, to a certain few i follow on twitter mm, so you yeah. kind of preview them and let them check yeah. and see all right so if, if if they do have any comments like oh you you can't actually say that then oh, oh this this feels a bit weird to me then I'll just change it or scratch the comic. Uh, mm, all right, all right. So it's a good but, place to follow you on Twitter then, so you can at least have some uh, advance showing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, some people do it on um, what's that thing called? Their people. Patreon. Oh, Patreon. Patreon. Yes, yes, yes. That one. Yeah. Uh, but I haven't, I haven't really seen much into that yet, and I haven't gotten, I haven't thought of that yet. But I mean, generally, I just uh, do it through friends mm. because you know uh, they do enjoy it, and I mean, I hope they do enjoy it. Well, I, I, I am really enjoying it, so that means you're doing something right. <laughs> uh, it's only brought to my attention that uh, they have no hearts. That particular line could mean to reference something else. Uh, I mean, this is definitely not the first time that has happened when I do uh, comic blogs. <laughs> And in res- I mean, in response to your earlier question on whether I have uh, sort of like a series in my uh, comics, I do actually, I did actually have uh, sort of like a short story done. It's actually on my main page. Mm-hmm. This, this is like a, this is like a freaking, uh, this is a, 
shameless advertising. Sure, no problem. We, we're all about the shameless advertising here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, no, because uh, the one of the bigger projects that I had, I did on my own accord was My Fair Cadence. Ah. Yeah. It's a 18, well, not 18, 17 page. 18, the last page is a credit page, so that's not that doesn't really count. So it's a 17 page full color illustrated short story where Shining Armor and uh, Princess Cadence, you know, uh, in their sort of teenage or cold years, if you will, mm-hmm, yeah. where, where they go on a date at the fair. Ah. Uh, and I, I, I sort of planned that over a couple of weeks before I actually started. I sort of did that when I was actually, uh, uh, I was actually in a hospital. Oh, yeah. And I, I mean, uh, no, I mean, I'm, I, I have no issue saying that I've actually been in and out of hospital. But uh, yeah, because I have some uh, personal reasons, personal reasons. issues. Yeah. yeah, personal issues. So. So you physical physical issues mm-hmm. like, I mean those those of you who have met me in person you you guys mm-hmm. might yeah so so no spoilers there so basically what you're saying is your fair cadence project you did it in the hospital while you were there doing things well half in the hospital because I've actually had a history where I you know to occupy my time I would do art while, while I would while be hospitalized this is definitely not my first time doing such things in the hospital but. Yeah, so, I mean, I developed the story, I had the idea, and eventually it took me uh, several months, because, again, it's a hobby, I don't actually do it 24 hours a day, right. but um, it, it took me probably several months before I actually finished it. Ah. Uh, I actually was aiming for Valentine's Day ah. release, but that didn't uh, reach it in time, because I wanted polish and for the story to make sense. Because the entire story actually has no dialogue. Oh, so it's so, that kind of comic, eh? So it doesn't need a translation. It doesn't need... It, it's just your interpretation of what you see is going on in the comic itself. Mm, all right, all right. Yeah. So it's what you see is what you get kind of deal. So it's a yeah. silent, um, silent movie, silent comic kind of deal where it's up to your interpretation of how they act, right? Yeah. And, and and there's there's little um, I mean I, I I don't mind spoiling this here. There's a little nice little twist at the end. It's a small little origin story, <laughs> but I guess I guess you guys will have to get the comic to uh, find out what it is. Mm-hmm. It's not very big, but I mean I hope you guys can support this artist and get the comic off my different art page. Yep, yep, it's there in the front page. Just click it there and you'll be brought to another page. So yeah, do support him. He deserves it. He deserves the love. Um, definitely. I, I do actually have a second uh, short story scripted, but I haven't got to... Uh, Drawing? Factoring it yet. Yeah. All right, all right. So I do see that you also do requests and commissions, right? Yeah, I do, but uh, it's on an occasional basis. I mean, I, I, I do I do get notes. I do get notes in my uh, different art, and I mean, I can't really reply because I feel that you know there are times where I can't commit to when I actually really really want to mm, so... to to help you guys out. But yeah, I mean, I hope to be answering these notes soon. All right, all right. So requests aside and commissions aside, um, I've met you in person and. That's an experience to be had. And thank you for the bookmark, by the way. No, no problem. And so, yeah, um, you've we've met Andy Price in person, right? Yeah. And um, uh, I'm a loss for words because you traded autographs with him. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, because, I mean, Andy Price was definitely a person I wanted to meet because uh, I got... The, I got MLP issue one in all six covers in the box set oh, from a friend. Okay, and which was something I really wanted because it was just so majestic. <laughs> indeed, you, indeed. You, you don't. I mean, I, I, I was, I'm not really a comic book person, but to see something, to see a art piece that is sprawled over six, uh, co- six comic covers is just very nice. I mean, if if you if you guys were at SDGCC, he had his folder where he had the oh. the life size. Uh, a pencil. Oh yeah, that one, that one. I'd say it's line art of that. That was very beautiful. Yeah, oh, I, I've. 
So, I mean, meeting him and getting all six copies signed and the box signed and my media pass signed. Yeah. It's a sign. was just, uh, just an amazing thing. And, of course, him coming all the way to Singapore, I had to give him something in return. Oh, so yeah, yeah. Artist, artist, I just uh, gave him the... Uh, you give him, you give him at the price at SDGCC 2000 welcome card? Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, it's on my table now. Yeah. correct. And, and the other one would be the parody of my OC saying hello to him in the oh, form, that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. form of uh, Shining Armor he, as he did in issue 11. Yeah, with the whole yeah. cadence thing. <laughs> that was awesome. I, 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 I definitely love those issues for the apparent reasons oh. earlier, I mentioned earlier on in the show. Yeah, me me and our other co-host, James, uh, we do a review show for the series and comics and we do really enjoy the comics like especially when Andy Price does it uh, that scene is unforgettable hello I mean I only do get, uh, unfortunately I only do get the comics from time to time when I when uh, comicsology has a uh, sale on those uh, I don't actually have I don't actually have room for the physical ones oh yeah I mean so a, a lovely little, little tablet with DRM free copies true true legally obtained mm-hmm. would be yeah. yeah true true I do understand because well I for as for me um, it's hard to get the comics because we don't have a shop that takes them in yeah so yeah. severely deprived yeah well at least you guys have a shop <laughs> we don't have them so yeah oh. well, I need to ask my guy to bring in them to bring them in <laughs> So I mean, I, I have contemplated buying the physical copies online, but it's just so inconvenient. Oh no! I, mean, I didn't discover the local stores myself. Oh, you don't know I, where to get them on locally? No, I mean, I I did recently oh. get uh, physical copies of Eleven, Twelve, and Friends of Forever Four. Mm. I love Friends of Forever Four. Friends Forever Four. That's rarity, Friends right? Four is Shining Armor and oh, Friends. Right. That's Friends Forever, not the Micro series. Yeah. Micro um, Micro Rarity was awesome too. If you can get that one, that is really good. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I mean, I just generally stick to the main series and the characters that you enjoy. Understandable, understandable. So, I I think that's the all the question I can think for now because well, I'm I'm just speechless right now because talking to you has been amazing. Um. Oh, by the way, you're in Singapore, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, my neighbor, yay! A lot of people don't know that I'm from Singapore. I get asked that a lot, and then they are surprised when they do find out that I'm from, I'm from Singapore. Yeah, I mean it's not that surprising. Just go to his DeviantArt page. No, no, I mean uh, not a lot of people actually see that. It's quite small. Yeah, so. I mean, but still, it's not it's not hidden. <laughs> so yeah, uh, you just need to keep an eye out. But still, but still, it it is surprising to know that. You're from Singapore, and it's fun to discover local, not really local, but um, Asian artists and Asian bronies once in a while. Yeah. Usually we get our most Europeans or Americans. And yeah, it's not that bad, but it's we need to represent the Asian market. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if I, if, I can just, if I can just add to this, I'm still surprised to this day that I actually have fans that I mean, those those who watch my Divinart page, those who follow me on Twitter and stuff, mm. I'm, I'm just surprised at all of this because it's definitely I w- I won't be where I am without without them, mm. and I'm just very just very thankful for that seriously because you know it's just very surprising for me because one day I was just I'm just just some another fan artist that does uh, weird looking show accurate style <laughs> ponies, and then the next day my stuff gets shown on. Uh, Equestria Daily and suddenly boom mm. uh, all that all the all the page views starts coming in I'm like overwhelmed by this <laughs> well, at least you kept it all tacked in and hit on your shoulders that's awesome anyway uh, Julian thank you for coming on and thank you for sharing your stories with us just to let the audience know where can they find you do you have the, I know you have the Twitters I know you have the DeviantArts obviously do you have anything else like um, Tumblrs and whatnot? If you know my Twitter handler, which is Judah Chris, my Tumblr is Judah Chris at Tumblr dot Tumblr dot com. All right. So, uh, well, I I would use the I would use the actual URL, but I think Judah Chris at dot Tumblr dot com is easier to remember. All right. And if anything, I'll just add into the show notes so you can just one button click away. Yay! Easy. 
So anywho, if you want to find where Julian is online, everything will be in the show notes. One click button away. Easy for you. I have to do all the work for you. Yay. So anyway, thank you, Julian. So will you be able to join us for news time? Yeah, I, yeah, no problem. Yay! <laughs> so I mean, usually around these times, eleven thirty, I do. I've, I've been doing recaps of the episodes, but oh, I'll, I'll, I'll just uh, go along with this. <laughs> okay, we'll try to be quick. We'll try to be quick. No, 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 no problem. All right. Anywho, Rom, it's news time. Awesome. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Romeo Alt, and this is the MBS Show News Time. Do 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 do. In today's news time, Funko's Pocket Pop are on their way. Are you a fan of Funko's Pop figure? Well, if you are, then we got great news for you. Funko's Pocket Pop are miniature versions of the lovable Pop vinyls. As for now, there will be two types of figures planned. First is the Pocket Pop keychain. And the second is Packed Tin Set. One of the Packed Tin Set is My Little Pony. In this set, you will get Rainbow Dash, Derpy, and Discord. Links can be found in the show notes below. Yeah, so... To whoever likes the little Funko pop figures, those um, big head, small body, big eye, black tea ponies. I know some people don't like it, but I do because they look yeah. cute. You don't like it? Uh, I have a Fluttershy sitting on my shelf. Oh, yeah. That's a, even I didn't get Twilight. Oh, uh, I, yeah. I'm not sure if they have it. Yeah. No, uh, well, the two two years ago, oh. SDGCC twenty twelve, they had an entire shelf. Of them. Oh. I think they did it the same this year as well. I didn't see any for ponies. It's on the other side of the of the convention wow. set. You miss all of them. Too. That would be so sad. Yeah, but still, but still, if you like that one and you want to have a miniature version, like a keychain for it, they're gonna have it. And as far as I know, Discord is new. They don't have a Discord yet. So, that's awesome. But Rom, what do you think, man? Shut up and take all my money. Really? You enjoy this? I want the derpy one. Uh, <laughs> it's so that cute. Goes into my, that goes into my Christmas wish list. Awesome, awesome. And Julian, what about you? I'm kind of indifferent to, to the to the pop figures, but I kind of prefer their... Vinyls? Prefer their vinyls, yeah. yeah the vinyl the looks so accurate. Looks like, yeah. yeah. The vinyl looks so accurate, but the pop figures, they look cute. And some say creepy. They're looking yeah, into it's your soul. Like bobble head variation, but they don't bobble. Which yeah, disturbs me. <laughs> I think there was a, there's a Celestia one coming. Out. Really? I, I don't know. It could be a rumor, or I definitely saw a mold for it. Oh wow! Uh, that, that's gonna be cool. Of pop- course, uh, the Discord is definitely coming out in the original size, not just a pocket pop. Mm, well, that, that's gonna be cool because I took a look. Uh, I took a look see and I couldn't find anything. And yeah, Discord for me, this is new and a small chibi Discord. Why not, right? There's actually a MLP merchandise Tumblr that I don't know gets up to date. I think I think they have an actual website as well. There's a website floating around. I'm not sure too sure about the URLs, but I, I definitely know they have a Tumblr. Mm. So any fake stuff, any upcoming stuff. Usually, they will, they will have the first eyes on it. Mm, okay, well, now I need to hunt down for that Tumblr. And <laughs> also, they have, they're have they in this tin set, which has a window, which is pretty cool because, well, uh, anything that comes in tin sets, you can always throw out the plastic and use it for something to keep your stuff in. So, that's a plus. Mm, yep. But anywho, uh, Pocket Pops, they're a mouthful to say. Hey, say it, say it five times. Pocket, 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 pocket. Funko Pocket Pop. Funko Pocket Pop. No, I can see. I know. Funko's Pocket Pop. What's so hard? See it five times fast. Funko's Pocket Pop. Funko's Pocket Pop. <laughs> Funko's Pocket Pop. No, oh, no, no. You knew you, you fumbled, man. <laughs> nope. But anywho, let's move on to the next news, bro. Another news. Top 10 My Little Pony Easter Eggs by Mike Vogel and Brian Lennard. Did I get the names right? Please tell me. Leonard. 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 Mm. Okay, what about... Okay, good. Thank you. No okay. problem, no problem. In a recent article written by Michael Vogel and Brian Leonard for KidsWorld.com, they have listed out the top ten Easter eggs from Mom Little Pony Friendship is Magic and Inquestria Girls. Check out the links for the full list of Easter eggs. So, yeah. Who doesn't love Easter eggs? Like, we try to find them on the show. We try to spot them out. And... Looking at this, this comes from Mike Vogel himself, the VP of development for Hasbro Studios and Brian. 
uh, executive director of development for Hasbro Studios. They know what's going on and they have the inside looks. So uh, looking at everything, there's a few that we know, like um, the one that we mentioned here is Future Twilight. It's a reference to Escape from New York. Some people might say it's also a reference to Metal Gear, but yeah, not people really pick that one up. That's what the My Little Pony was referencing. Yeah, yeah, true, true. And also the uh, cherry scene. Remember the one with the cherry that... Um, who was it? Rainbow Dash and Applejack ran a bit too fast to uh, to the conveyor belt and whatnot. There's that scene. I mean, there's a lot of scenes that are really awesome and they list it out here. And the best one here is Derpy. <laughs> Number one. I would be surprised to know uh, a fan of our age who knows the I Love Lucy reference. Oh yeah, I mean, that one was... Whew, I actually... I, I mean, looking at the list, it's like, okay, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. I didn't know. I mean I, I mean, I don't watch Arrested Development, so... Oh that, yeah, that, that one was surprising to me too. I'm surprised that Twilight's outfit is not the same snake. Yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's another snake. Yeah. I didn't see Escape from New York either, but you know, I'm sort of weirded out by the rest of these. I mean, I I definitely know the Star Wars one, but yeah, yeah. these are these are quite surprising. Well, uh, the Transformers was there in Equestria Girls. Yeah. Spoilers, Norman. No, remember the one where Pinkie Pie transforms? I know. Yeah, it's not that, it's not a spoiler. The movie's out. <laughs> Oh, oh, I thought you meant I the movie. My bad. Just, uh, Pardon? Sorry, I had something else in my mind. <laughs> she did roll out, but I didn't hear... I, I mean, I'm not big on Transformers, but... No, she did that. Yeah, if I would have heard that, I would have recognized it. No, no, no. Uh, it's in Questor Girls 1 when they were still ponies. Go take a look-see. Yeah, that one. Yeah. I was thinking about something else. My apologies. Who are you? I'm sorry, okay? My mind is... I got like 10 processes running at the same time on the back of my head. <laughs> Uh, you need to step it up. But anywho, yeah, go take a look see at the full list because we're not doing it justice because there's there's funny ones here. There's ones that who I didn't know that one happened. And uh, Rom, next one, please. And last but not least, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic turns four years old. On October 10th, 2010, the Hub Network was founded. It had shows like Pound Puppies, Strawberry Shortcake, Transformers Prime, and the show that had a great impact on people's life, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. My Little Pony is one of the shows that is still running on the network with new content still being produced for it. It also spawned two movies and gathered a fan base that is very talented. So, yeah, Ponies turned four yesterday, or as I was recording a few days ago. So, anywho, yeah, October 10, 2010. It was four years ago, and pff, who would have thought, right? Did the hub have Pound Puppies? Yes, they had, yes. and still running. That's the thing. Pound Puppies is one of the shows that is still running. And according to the last episode's news, hub is going to, you know, get nuked in a few days, uh, or, you I- know. I won't say nuke. I would just say that they're rebranding. I'm calling it a nuke. No, no, no. Because it was working fine. Why the heck would they do that? Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bit disturbed by the sudden move that they are going to rebrand themselves. No, well, uh, that's a discussion for another day. But since <laughs> everyone's talking about it, you know what? I'm just going to say my piece. The deal was. Early on, they were known as Discovery Kids. Hasbro opted in and put some cash into their in, put some cash into Discovery Kids and changed their name into the Hub. But now Hasbro opted out. Now Discovery has nothing to do with Hasbro, so they had to change the name. It's a matter of business. So yeah, it's that business talk. Did Hasbro opt out? Uh, I, I mean, I read the story differently. I didn't know Hasbro opted out. I think Hasbro didn't want to continue on the partnership with um, Discovery. Oh dear. It's not oh dear kind of deal. I, I think it's business. So I mean, we're not really into the business talk here because uh, need more research, need more this, need more that. I mean, we can speculate as much as we want, but without solid reasons and without a proper mindset on finance, it's just us speculating stuff. So, you know who's yeah. going to be greatly affected by this change? Who? The people who make fake screenshots with the Hub logo. On it. <laughs> oh, yeah. But you know what? Um, people who want to make new fake screenshots with the Discovery 
family is going to be have fun with this. But still, uh, Pony's turning four. Uh, who would have thought this show will turn four years old, right? Um, not we really. All kind of did. <laughs> It's hardly surprising with this driving little fan base of ours. True, true. <laughs> uh, but still, if you guys think about it, like, uh, the shows I mentioned, like Pump Puppies, Strawberry Shortcakes, and Transformers, those are the few shows that premiered earlier on. And Pump Puppies and Pony seems to be the only one who is there from the very beginning. Not even Dan Versus carried on. Which is kind of sad because Dan Versus was a pretty nice show. Indeed. Mm-hmm. So ponies, <laughs> without without ponies, we won't be here. We won't be here, and probably we won't know each other. That's true. Mm-hmm. I have to thank Lauren Faust and the people in charge because of creating an awesome show. Thank you so much for just taking the risk and doing it. But first, we're gonna thank Michael Bay. For the Transformers movie. Oh, okay. If it wasn't for him, yep. Hasbro wouldn't th- think of, you know, let's give artistic freedom to these guys. You're thinking let's see what happens. You're, you're recapping what James said, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you know that? Of course I did. Julian, did you know that? Did I know about Michael Bay and Transformers? No, Transformers, Michael Bay, and Ponies. I, well... Are you guys talking about the way before or the reference in... No, no, no. Okay. The story is this. Um, Hasbro wanted to make a Transformers movie. Uh-huh. And they wanted to make it an awesome movie. So they called in Michael Bay. Uh, but anywho, they call in Michael Bay. They give him creative freedom. He did the show and it was a big success. So after that, the higher-ups at Hasbro decided to reboot My Little Pony Hmm. and did the same treatment, giving the creator or giving the person who's going to be in charge creative freedom. And came in Lauren Faust and came in Ponies. And because of Michael Bay, we got Ponies. Yay. I know that. I wouldn't link, I wouldn't link that correlation together. I I mean, I, I definitely knew Lauren Faust had a freedom and stuff, but yeah, but yeah. that freedom was given thanks to Michael's Bay success. Yep. <laughs> that, that is an interesting fact. Yep. <laughs> Thank you, I mean, Michael got... Bay. Yeah. I mean, what did he do? Definitely, the, the, the I mean, more importantly was the, sort of like the open arms uh, Hasbro had with, and, and Lauren Faust had with the unorthodox fan base. The adults and you know not just not just young girls, young boys, mm. everyone of any ages can enjoy such a show. Yeah, I mean that has been Lauren Faust's mo to make a show that everyone would enjoy, or at least parents would kill themselves while watching. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely. I mean, it's definitely. It's definitely a show um, parents can watch with their kids. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's highly recommended. Yeah, I mean we can say that because sure, we are, yeah, we're, we're biased. Yeah, really it is definitely. I've, got, I, I've I've had I've had friends and family who uh, are into. Do I have friends? <laughs> <laughs> maybe I, maybe it's just one. Maybe not not a good example. But I mean, personally, I do have. But yeah, that's why I don't have to mention. Yeah, I mean, but still, uh, I do understand what you mean because um, the show was made in. Sorry, the show had always had this mo where we will think about how good the show is. We won't think about what you're going to sell. And that, came, that came after. But, you know, with all of this, like with the show, how it is, and how good the show is, it's no surprise that it will last for four years and coming up to five with its coming uh, up and coming fifth season. So, you know what? Good job. Uh, even if they change to the Discovery family, I will still support them because... I enjoy their product. I enjoy the ponies. And I will still keep on watching, even with Equestria, Girls, Rainbow Rocks, and whatever future pony girl thing that they want to do. And Flash Sentry is Twilight Shipping. No! It's the Flash Sentry and Twilight Sparkle show. Ah, no, no, I need to be that guy. No! <laughs> with that out of the way, with that out of the way, let's move on to the next topic. Take us out, Rom. 
I have been Romeo with the NBA Show News. Back to you, Norman. Do, 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 do. Thank you, thank you. We need a jingle for my news time, man. Uh, go hire someone to do it. So, anywho, moving on to the next topic. Next topic is shoutouts. So, my shoutout goes to you, Julian. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for joining us on the show. And thank you for sharing your experience because it has been an honor. No. Well, I guess. <laughs> oh. I'm, I'm definitely not used to people saying stuff like that. Okay. I'm uh, just normal. I'm just a no- definitely a normal everyday person who just started to decide that drawing t- Twilight Sparkle on Adobe Illustrator <laughs> was a good idea. You're not the first one, my friend. You're not the first one. And you won't be the last one. <laughs> but anyway, also thank you, Rom. Thank you for coming on and doing your job. No problem. I'll try and get a jingle for you. I, <laughs> oh. I could just even do in those sounds. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Rom, shout out. Hi, mom. <laughs> Anyone else? Thanks for coming, bro. Thanks for the pizza. It was awesome. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, Julian, any shout outs for you? I guess to. I mean, I, I did mention earlier, I mean, all my, all my fans and stuff, you know, this is just, it's definitely been surprising and it's one hell of a ride. True that, true yeah. that. And don't forget to visit his page, like his art, like his Tumblr, you know, just follow him all over the place like a stalker. <laughs> uh, anyway, bad jokes aside, uh, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at the MBS show at gmail dot com. If you would like to email us personally, the links are in the show notes. You can also reach us on Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS show. Suribot will tweet about the show, complaining about James and well, pff, I got no idea what she does because she's a robot. And as for me, you can. Tweet me at Norman Sanzo. I tweet about food, toys, and whatever tickles my fancy. And recently, what's tickling my fancy is nothing much. <laughs> Rom, where can I reach you, man? You can find me at religiousgallery.tumblr.com because I nuked my Twitter. Why? Because I didn't, wasn't using it. Okay, then how will you be the popular guy like Markiplier? <laughs> I'm not seeking popularity. I'm in it for the funsies. <laughs> okay, Markiplier. <laughs> Dang, I'm Isaac Clark. No proper space. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also, like our Facebook page. Yes, we have the Facebooks. You can also catch us on PonyVidLife.com. Links are in the show notes. So, I am Norman Sanzo. I am Romuald. And I'm Julian. And Marker Player, take us out! And we will see you on the next podcast. <laughs> Bye-bye! Oh, God, that works! <laughs> when you kiss me, you set my world on fire. Please don't stop, love, wanna keep holding you Be my love song, my cadence, my heart's desire We can't deny it, love's in bloom Oh, it's true, I love you Yes, it's true, I love you You're the air in my lungs, the ground needs my feet The song that my heart keeps singing to me You're the thought in my head that won't ever fade Not a doubt in my mind of this choice that I have made You're the choice that I have made
true. I love you. You're the air in my lungs, the ground beneath my feet, the song that my heart keeps singing to me. You're the thought in my head that won't ever fade, not a doubt in my mind about this choice that I have made. You're the choice that I have made. My heart beats with yours, my cards have been played. No reservations about the choice that I've made. And I'm looking back, the pathway seems bright. 'Cause with you by my side, everything is right. You're the air in my lungs, the ground beneath my feet, the song that my heart keeps. Sing it to me. Hey, hey, you're the air in my lungs. The ground beneath my feet. The song that my heart keeps singing to me. You're the thought in my head that won't ever fade. Not a doubt in my mind that this choice that I have made. You're the choice that I have made. I love the choice that I. Are you a fan of the Funko Pop figure? If you are, then we have great news for you. Funko's Pocket Pop are miniature versions of the lovable pop vinyls. As for now, they will. They will be two types, or there will be two types. There? Oh, yeah, there. Sorry. God damn it, Norman. I'm sorry. There will be in. They will be in, or there will be in. And Funko's Pocket Pop is freaking there is an difficult to pronounce. <laughs> I know, sorry. All right, um, there you go. There. And I've been wondering yes. what is with my grammar. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm trying not to laugh with the pronunciation of Funko's Pocket Pop because I can't pronounce it either. It's just so frustrating. Okay, let me take it from the top. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> Wait, okay. what's that? The jingle. No, no. I mean, what do you mean by take take us out? I mean, there was nothing. I mean, I mean, you you can scratch this part. It's just strange for me, but. There was no other news topics. <laughs> yeah, no. So this is what's going to take us out. Like, oh, that's the last news we really take us out. But if you find it strange, do comment. I mean, you guys. I mean, it's episode one thirty five. So mm-hmm. I mean, you guys know what you're doing. But I mean, this is a bit strange. I'm not waiting for four twenty. <laughs> 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 uh, you know, it's, it's, it could be strange, but no, nobody seems to be um, talking about it. But if you do find <laughs> it strange, yeah, let us know because we are trying to improve. Well, one thirty five, we're improving slowly. <laughs> So you find it strange, really? I don't know. It was a bit abrupt. Hmm. <laughs> All right. I, I'll try and make the transition much smoother. Then <laughs> remember, Rob, make it smoother. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. Get him a tune, Norman. Oh. Get him That's a... what I said. Give me a jingle. Oh, okay, boss. <laughs> we'll do. Let's see. Okay. <clears throat> Three, two, one. Okay, Mark Player. <laughs> Dang, I'm Isaac Clark. <laughs> no proper space. That's a good impression. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, n- now that you brought it up, he does sound like Markiplier. I know, right? I sound not like Markiplier. I mean, on on certain on certain occasions, yeah. I don't. <laughs> now, if anything, I sound more like Christopher Walken. Nope, Markiplier it is. Mm, no, no, no. Damn it, Bob. <laughs> it's not much of a crystal. Well, Christopher Walken, if he can do that that pausing, stuttering thing, he does. Do 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 more cowbell and stuff. You you've seen the this the SNL skit, right? Now, what this situation needs is more cowbells. Almost, yeah, yeah almost. But it's, but it's more no, market player. I mean, it's it's more definitely market, market player yeah. in, in, the, in what we got earlier. Yeah, we got a market player in the show. Woo! I'm not market player. I'm in the so, energy zones. You know, it, it, instead of the jingle, you could do it. Uh, or, or like you know, instead of the outro, you guys can. Uh, thanks, thanks for listening, you guys. I'll see you. <laughs> yeah, we could do that <laughs> on the next podcast. Yeah, there it is. There it is. You see, there it is. Markiplier. We could try that. Anywho, <laughs> three, two.